It's time to buckle up them bootstraps, folks, because Arizona's cutest show is getting even cuter. Can I get a yee? Can I get a haul? Yee-haw! It's Pets on Parade. Good morning and welcome to Pets on Parade brought to you by 3TV. I'm Kelsey Dickerson with the Arizona Humane Society. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't worry, I'm not doing that voice again. Now today we have such amazing animals dressed up in really cute costumes as well as Halloween pet safety tips and even a Halloween game as well. And today we're gonna give you lots of great tips on how to keep your pets safe as well as a fun and important reminder that it's never cool to kidnap kittens. But before before we talk about the possum game we want to play with our viewers, I just can't help but to show you Marshmallow. And we all can't get over how adorable this little taco puppy is. Can you guess how old she is? We'll let you know later on in the show. And now it's time for a little fun game on your screen. You're seeing the pets of today's on-screen volunteers who submitted their favorite Halloween photos of their furry babies. It's your task to match the pet with the correct spokesperson on today's show. You have Perry, Lisa, Denise, Stacy, Janine, and Linda to choose from and correctly match up with the adorable pet picture you think they submitted on your screen. Let's see how many you guessed right later on in the show. And now this handsome baby that we're hearing <laughs> sing his heart out was wearing a gold chain collar and was clearly loved by someone before he got out while we do everything that we can to hopefully reunite pets with their owners this is a great reminder of things that you can do to make sure they get back home if they ever go missing right Lisa right this is Tupac who is making his appearance as a bunny and as you can see it's barely working <laughs> I can just keep those ears on there for one second until he shakes them off so one quick reminder about Halloween costumes on pets. Take a cute picture, post it on your social media, but probably not appropriate to leave bunny ears like this on your dog all night when you go out trick-or-treating. So Tupac here was found as a stray, running with a gold chain, but no tag. Hear this tag? See this tag? That's all it takes is a collar with a tag. If you don't have a tag, write it on the inside of the collar with a Sharpie. And better yet, for those of you who say that you can't put a collar on your dog, microchip them. Tupac got microchipped with us. He was not previously microchipped. This is a microchip scanner. All you do, wave it over the dog. They don't need a collar. They don't need anything. And there you go, his microchip number. This gets your dog reunited with you. They can call an 800 number and he gets back to you right away. But easier yet, just a collar with your phone number. So Tupac never again has to be without his posse. Make sure that he gets a collar and a tag when he gets adopted. But just in case, that backup is the microchip. Yes, it works. I actually just had that happen with me and a pet that I found. So thank you for that, Lisa. And now while you often see our pets once they're healthy, there's truly a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people often don't see when we talk about the sick, injured, and abused pets that we treat. Denise, these sweet kitties are perfect examples of how a seemingly simple kitty cold can have lasting effects on our young animals. Yep, this is Jack, Scully, and Sally, and they came to the Arizona Humane Society with their sibling, who you'll meet later in the show, and they were all treated for upper respiratory infections. An upper respiratory infection is a generic term, actually, because there's many different types of infections, both viral and bacterial, that can affect cats and kittens. Um, the uh, symptoms of them are similar to the common cold in that it can create congestion and runny eyes and runny nose. They can have a lasting impact though if the infection is not treated. So unfortunately these guys have some scarring on their cornea um, that does not cause them any pain or discomfort, but they'll have to be monitored by a vet as they get older. These guys are help, happy, healthy, and looking for a new home for Halloween.
Oh, so cute. We just love them. Thank you so much, ladies. And this is no trick. You can be treated to a brand new car thanks to AHS's car raffle. The Arizona Humane Society and Valley Toyota dealers have teamed up once again to bring you the chance to win a brand new 2023 RAV4. Tickets are just $20 each or three for 50. And you know what the best part is? All proceeds from these ticket purchases go to help homeless pets just like the ones you see every Saturday on our screen. Now there's only a few tickets left, so make sure to visit azhumane.org slash Toyota to get your tickets today. And while we do see it far too often, the reality is that many times we do find pets that are abandoned. We're always grateful for the times that we or a Good Samaritan gets to them on time. But please tell us about this story of baby Linda. This is three-year-old baby, 42 pounds of baby love. And she's <laughs> treat motivated all the time for treats. Yes, tricks, treats, trick and treat, <laughs> trick or treat. Um, she was abandoned. She was found actually at our South Mountain campus tied to a pole. We don't know how long she was tied out there. She might have been out there for quite a while as she has a little bit of sunburn on the tip of her nose. Her eyes are a little pink and her ears are. But look, she's leaning against me. She must have been with a family because she's very comfortable leaning into me, wants her pets, likes to have her butt scratched and very much into herself right now on the camera. This is baby. She was abandoned and we do have resources. You don't need to surrender or abandon or let your animal stray. We have resources online. We can rehome, we can foster, we can do a home away from home program. And we also have really great programs for training and she, does a little bit with treats, with the sits and stay, but she probably could do really well with a whole training program. So again, this is 42 pounds of baby love, and she is our little pity this morning. Oh, so cute. And Linda, it's great about training too because that also helps build the bond between you and your pet. So thank yes. you for those great tips. And you just can't have Halloween without a pumpkin. Please introduce us to, the, to this little gourd and her sister, Janine. Well, Pumpkin and Snowy, which they're black kitties, <laughs> go figure. Anyway, they were brought in as strays, and they were they both had really goopy eyes. They were sickly to an emergency animal clinic, and our field team picked them up and brought them to our Second Chance Animal Trauma Hospital and treated them, and then they put them in the ba Bottle Baby ICU, which is a phenomenal program that we have. We've saved over 2,000 animals just alone this year because other shelters don't have the facilities to handle these little babies that need to be fed and cared for two to three, every two to three hours, which is amazing that it takes a village and to save these little lives. Um, but they're very much bonded with each other. They're siblings and they just absolutely love each other. They went into a foster hero's home, so they're socialized. I mean, I had this one on its back and it was like giving me kisses. And I mean, look at this, this is awesome. He's so cute. So and you're gonna definitely, if you could take them both home, that would be the best because they do much better in pairs with kittens. And of course, I had to be a guardian angel for our homeless pets this today. Oh, yes, you are definitely a guardian <laughs> angel, and so is everyone here and viewing today. Thank yes. you so much, Janine and Kathy. And now we didn't get to show off this adorable picture last week, but I love it because it feels like you can tell Zoe's expression just from her ears. Thank you, Zoe and pet parents for watching. Now, if you want an easy fall treat that you can make at home for your deserving pups, We'll tell you all about these dog-friendly snacks later on in the show. And welcome back to Pets on Parade. Now, it's hard to imagine anyone abandoning a, abandoning a pet, but the reality is of things is that we see it all the time, just like baby and Perry, we do have another baby that was abandoned. Can you tell us about Marshmallow? Right, Kelsey, a 10 week old little uh, puppy here and was found in a parking lot. And uh, I would have to say we're lucky that this little dog is here with us today because there's a lot of dangers out there for puppies. You know, I have spent many, many years in adoptions telling people how difficult it is to have a puppy. Well, I have to apologize to all those people because I tremendously underestimated what I've, been, what I've been telling people. I've been fostering lately and it is a lot, a lot of work. It is extremely rewarding and it's a lot, a lot of fun too, but there's a couple things you really do. First of all, going into it, you have to realize you are dealing with infants. Um, 
there's not much you can really do with an infant. You don't, uh, you don't discipline them. You don't, you, there's not a whole lot you can really do with them. So going in with the right attitude is extremely important. Puppy proofing your home is extremely important. Taking all those danger things out, putting barriers up where there needs to be barriers. And I would say the number one trait you need is a lot, a lot of patience because they will try your patience and there will be some days you're very, very frustrated, but like I said, extremely rewarding. And it's an actually uh, a, a great experience to actually take a puppy and turn it into a, a, a well-behaved little doggy. Oh, yes. And they just know how cute they are and how much they can get away with. But positive reinforcement is key. So thank mm. you for those tips, Perry. And now I think our next furry friend has definitely earned her name. Stacy. who is this gorgeous feline? Oh, this is pretty girl and it fits her to a T. She was brought <laughs> in at the end of September with ocular and nasal discharge. She was found as a stray and she was also underweight. She got treated for an upper respiratory infection, otherwise known as a kitty cold. And then she went into a foster home and uh, where she was further treated in the foster home. And she's a perfect example of why it's so important to spay and neuter our pets. Just to cut down on pet homelessness and uh, pet abandonment too, because sometimes people get a pet and realize, oh, that's not what I wanted after they've already bred them. So uh, also, if you're seeing a lot of stray cats or feral cats in your neighborhood, you can help them as well through our trap, neuter, and release program. Uh, you can go on so many pets, uh, too many pets.org <laughs> to find uh, more information on the trap, neuter, and release. So great. Thank you for those tips. And you can also visit so many cats.org as well. Thank you, Stacy. And like Stacy was mentioning, we have an absolutely elongated cat and kitten season and have hundreds of kittens coming through our doors each and every day, even still. So that's why it's important to remember to don't kidnap kittens. Let's take a look. Are you the one that called in the kidnapping? You bet I am. You think you can point out the culprit? That's her, I'm sure of it. Just as I suspected. You tried to kidnap a kitten? Just when I thought I'd heard it all. I was only trying to help. I saw this poor little kitten all alone, and it needed my help. Did you at least wait eight hours to see if Mom returned? Eight hours? No. He's right, you know. In most cases, Mamika is just out and about gathering food and will be right back. It's true. Mom always offers the best chance of survival for these little kittens. Oh, so I should have waited before taking the little guys? Wait, who are you to tell me not to steal things? If you or someone you know has found a litter of kittens or not sure what to do, just have a chat with them. Or you can refer to the azhumane.org slash found kittens. Tons of great information on there. All right, I will. I promise, guys. I promise. You better. And remember, don't kidnap kittens. Oh man, there's only a few things that will make me do that accent. So <laughs> make sure you don't kidnap kittens. And Carrie, you show us a foster pet each and every year, and I can't imagine anyone not wanting to take this sweet little Evie home, but there is a great need for people to take them home, right? Just temporarily. Absolutely, Kelsey. In today's foster segment, I'd love to speak a little bit about our dogs that have colds. So Evie just came from our dog isolation ward where she was being treated for kennel cough. And as you can see, she's just all about the tummy rubs right now. But kennel cough is a very common thing that you see in a shelter environment. As the shelter capacity increases, the length of stay sometimes also increases. And so dogs are more susceptible to to stress, longer lengths of stay, and depending on their past history, they may have come into the shelter without vaccinations. And so kennel cough is a very treatable um, a thing that we often put into foster homes. And so if a kennel cough foster, we would look for a foster parent to take the animal for anywhere from 10 to 14 days. They'd administer antibiotics and love on the animal as, as normal care. And we would ask that a foster hero keep these pets separate from all other pets in your home as to not spread any cold. 
symptoms. But these cases are very easy. It's a great first foster experience and we do have many dogs right now that could benefit from your home and heart opening up to them. If you'd like to foster, please know that we do provide all supplies, medication, and equipment that you might need. And you can sign up to be a foster today at azhumane.org backslash foster. And come on down to adopt Evie. She's all recovered, <laughs> Kelsey, and is ready to find her forever home. I don't know, she's not cute at all, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for that important information, Carrie. And we might not have uh, this kitty to thank for one of the most beloved Halloween Christmas animated film mashups, but he is a celebrity in his own right. We'll introduce you to Tim Burton after the break. Welcome back to Pets on Parade. Now, if there's any Tim Burton fans out there, this kitty might be for you, right, Denise? Yes, this guy is looking for somebody to have as a buddy for Halloween movie night. So if you're looking for a buddy for Halloween movie, come on down and get Tim Burton. The Arizona Humane Society takes in thousands of animals every year, and we rely so heavily on all of our volunteers, both who provide foster homes for the pets and volunteers who spend time with the pets in the shelter providing enrichment and socialization to pets like Tim Burton and his siblings who were recovering from upper, to upper respiratory infections. Yes, that is right. We absolutely need so many volunteers, including all the volunteers to make this show run. Thank you for that, Denise. And for any Harry Potter fans out there, you might recognize this cutie's name, but this is a good Voldemort, Perry. This is a great Voldemort. <laughs> Another little stray found uh, by a good Samaritan brought into his seven months of age. And uh, as most strays are underweight, malnourished, had to go to a foster home to put some weight on. And when we got in the foster home, we realized that probably due to that, there is um, some allergies occurring that's causing some dermatitis and things like that. Very, very common with puppies. Uh, it's, you know, extremely important. Puppies are very hardy, but they also have an immune system that's not quite developed yet. They will likely recover from some things. However, the problem is, is that if they do have some illnesses as puppies, when they get older, it can sometimes follow them throughout their entire life. Very important to get your pets vaccinated. The DA2PP is the one you really got to do. Parvo, distemper. Pair influenza and hepatitis, very, very important. Get your pets vaccinated. Take care of them when they're young, and they'll be old guys when you get older. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Perry. Now, of course, you guys have all been waiting for this. The treats, you just need three ingredients. It's one and three quarters cup of oat flour, one cup pureed pumpkin, not pie filling, and half cup of peanut butter. Make sure it doesn't have xylitol because that can be dangerous to dogs. Mix these ingredients all together in a large bowl or food processor. Roll the dough into tiny little balls and then gently press them onto your cooking sheet. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and 20 minutes later, voila, you have some delicious treats that I might even take a bite out of. Huh, I don't know, those look really good. So let us know how you like them. And special thank you to Rover.com for that recipe. And we love our bunny friends, so it's only appropriate to have our very own bunny introduce this lovely bunny. <laughs> Please let us know about this girl, Lisa. This sweetheart is Sarabi. She is the matriarch of the Lion King, Simba's mom, and she's just a tiny little bunny. She is a lion head. Her and I have the same hairdo, a little bit out of control um, with our ears today. And um, that's what they are known for, their lion's manes, which is why she was appropriately named after the Lion King. But our bunny lovers out there, anybody, anybody, please, we got in, I'm sure you saw our news, 139 bunnies. And so that's why I felt I needed to dress up as a bunny to beg you to come down. If you're looking for one or a pair, we'll pair them up for you. We're looking for bunny adopters. They are all in process of being spayed and neutered so that they won't have more bunnies but our hoarding case has really filled our kennels with bunnies. So if you know anybody, there's a place on our website, if you go to azhumane.org, where you can put in your name or a friend's name, and we will contact you when our bunnies are spayed and neutered and ready to go home with you. Oh, so cute. And sorry, there's too many beautiful girls on the show, Lisa. I think I called you Linda. Sorry about that. <laughs> and have you been thinking about the match game? It is your last chance to choose which pet goes with which spokesperson. We'll let you know if you're right after the break.
Welcome back to Pets on Parade. Now, we can't have a show without Miss Wiggles and a devil and an angel, Janine. Exactly. Well, Miss Wiggles kind of has an interesting story. She was part of a house fire, and uh, her owner wound up being in the hospital and cannot care for her anymore. So we definitely want you, if you have, you need to set up the three Ps. Pr uh, make a plan, and then you uh, execute it, and then you, you I'm just blank on that. Anyway, that's it. Gotcha. Right. Got it. Okay. So make sure you have an emergency kit set up just in case for any horrible situation and you're already ready to go. So the, the, she's already, she's such a sweet girl. I mean, look at this baby. Just because she's big, it doesn't mean anything, but she's just a darling pit bull. You uh, would just love her. Yes. So cute. Thank you for that, Janine. And you can visit azhumane.org slash disaster for more tips. And of course, you guys have also been waiting for this. It is time to see whose pets go with which spokesperson. And drum roll, please. We are starting with Stacy, of course, and her adorable baby with that piggy tail. Oh, I just love it so much. And next, perhaps, is a gimme if you're a longtime viewer. Of course, Lisa has the Doby, who are ready to fiesta. And this fashionista can rock the bob like no one else can. Did you guess that this is Linda's adorable baby? And yet another fashion icon, who other than Janine would have a cute watermelon pup? And I wish I could crochet as well as this cute kitty's owner, Denise. No wonder why you're so great with an adorable helper like that. And last but not least, we all love superheroes. This is Perry, the foster hero's super pup. Thank you guys so much for playing along. Let us know how many you got right. And we love our sweet babies, especially ones as nostalgic as S'mores. Right, Linda? Yes, yeah, S'mores is a two-year-old male, and he was found as an injured stray. Um, he's all well, well and ready to go. He's one hot, hot dog. I don't know if you could see his little costume here. But he is very timid at first, but he's very, very lovable. He needs a second chance in a beautiful new home. Somebody maybe with a yard that would like to play with him. And if you do find a stray, call 911, Arizona Humane Society, or the Maricopa Care and Control. Don't yes, forget, that. Oh. wear a collar, put a tag on it, phone number. Take this boy home. Yes, thank you. So sorry about that, Miss Jazz Hands. And our last kitty of the show couldn't think of a better one than Orby. Please let us know about this girl, Stacy. Well, Orby is actually the sister of Pretty Girl, who you saw earlier in the show. They were both treated for ocular and nasal discharge and upper respiratory infection. One thing to know about this little one is she doesn't take any guff. She's not afraid to stand up for herself. So come on and meet this feisty little spicy kitten. She's sweet, but she's also ready to rumble. <laughs> you know what? When you're that cute, like, you can do whatever you want. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. And who doesn't love a pet with a human name? Or perhaps Stanley's have dog names, Perry? I don't know. But either way, <laughs> he is adorable. Another stray, Kelsey, and it was found by a good Samaritan. They, they kept them in their care for a while. He was limping badly. Got him back. We realized he had a badly fractured leg. And you think, well, what's the big deal about a fractured leg? With pets sometimes, <laughs> They can't uh, do the things you need to do to recuperate very quickly. So we found that we, he was in his best interest to remove that leg. He is 73 pounds without the leg. So you can figure out how big this guy is going to be. He is a big baby doll. He's a gorgeous brindle. Come on down and meet this beautiful Stanley. And Perry, I'm going to throw a question to you. For special needs pets, anyone that's maybe hesitant about adopting a pet with three legs, what would you say? You know, this guy is having absolutely no problem. He had a little trouble here on the floor here, but outside he rumbles around. When it's the rear leg, the rear leg is really no issue at all. They can run, they can jump. I have seen agility dogs with three legs. You can see how active he is. It's not gonna stop him at all, so don't let that be a, a hindrance to adopting. Oh my goodness, and what would you guess his breed is? We have him as like a pity mix. You know, oh, I actually he's think he's got some Dane in him. He's got a very Dane looking head and he's brindle colored, which is also a Dane color. So I'm just kind of thinking, these look very Dane to me. Oh, he's I a big love dude. it. Yeah, I know we said he has a human name, but he's almost the size of a human too. So thank you so much <laughs> for that, Barry. And thank you all for tuning in with us today. Now we hope you have a safe and happy Halloween. If you think about it, please make sure to share your pets in costumes on our social media pages, including our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are so thankful to you each and every week. Make sure to have a happy and safe Halloween. We'll see you right here next week for Pets on Parade.